It's terrible. Uh, neither do I. I'm just trusting it's somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in the cloud, yeah. All right. Well, hey, Kelsey, just um, tell us a little bit about yourself. What, you know, what's your name? What's your job? How many kids do you have? All the Kelsey stuff. Okay, well, um, I'm Kelsey, and I live on a farm. My husband would call it a ranch, but to me, it's all the same. Um, I primarily stay at home with our three kids, um, Oliver, Isaiah, and Sawyer, and Oliver's four. Sawyer just turned one, so it's essentially three kids in just over three years, which is insane in some people's mind. It's crazy, but we love it. Um and I just recently opened an online boutique. I don't even know where to look. Like, do I look at myself or do I look at the little camera thing? Wherever you're looking right there is, <laughs> is great. You can look wherever you want, Kelsey. <laughs> okay. Um, I opened an online boutique, I think, mid-May. And just for a creative outlet for me and hope to um, bring a little extra income on the farm without me having to actually go somewhere because that would just kind of negate having anything. Um. So that's kind of what I'm trying out and doing. And so far I'm loving it. It's a huge learning, excuse me, learning curve. But um, I don't know, I really like it. So I'm hoping it just keeps progressing. It looks so fun to watch your Instagram story. I'll be just trying all the, on all the fun clothes. I'm like, how fun would it like to be your job? Just get boxes of clothes and try them on and sell them. That sounds like an awesome way. It is. I mean, it'd be even better if I didn't have to do it in my bedroom all the time with a crib in the background, but I'm trying my best. But to be, to say that, I totally think it was a God thing of placing you in my life when it did, because I don't know that I would have done that as much as I said, I wanted to do it. I don't know if I would have done it or at least been as comfortable and confident in doing like the try-ons and stuff. If I wouldn't have gone through your program like I don't think I would have had the self-confidence to be like yes let's show the whole world my body yeah with clothes on obviously right. but <laughs> you'll have to share your dressing room experience too I remember I remember the day when you told me about when you went to try on clothes so all right well why don't you just um what what initially sort of drew you to like find me and then to eventually kind of sign up to the program what what were you dealing with that caused you to want to you know hire a coach and make this a priority honestly I don't know like this is why I totally think it was a god thing because I saw I follow Nikki Nikki lives not that far from me and so I'd always see her posting about what she she was working with you already and just constantly seeing her stuff and I was just like wow she's rocking it like good for her and I think I finally was at the point after I had Sawyer of like how can I try to get my pre-baby body back or at least feel better about myself? Because having that many kids in that short of a time is a lot on your body, mental, whatever. And I don't know. I just felt like I was in a funk, maybe. this I couldn't like actually tell you the exact way I was feeling. I just knew I wasn't feeling good in my body. And I didn't know how to change it because I have tried workout groups or whatever. And I feel like it's the accountability, like just having someone there to push you, help you kind of walk you through or say like, you're doing great. You're doing fine. It's normal. It's okay to fall down and get back up like blah, blah, blah. But to just be like on your own is hard. I think hard for me. Um, yeah. And it's different. Like when somebody can give you, I can give you do these workouts and eat food every day and you'll do great that's one thing, but then there's also the other, it's like, well, hold on, I've got a wedding to go to this weekend and I'm exhausted because I have three kids under four and I've got, you know, there's all these different factors that come into play. And so that's, that's sort of what I do, you know, is like, yes, I'll give you the workouts and food suggestions and all this kind of stuff, but it's like the implementation part of it is hard. So when you see somebody thriving, like Nikki was, it's like, well, what are they doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So oh, during, during, during the pro, what, um, after your 12 weeks, what kind what changes did you see um, during the program and afterwards? What results did you get? What changes, you know, menti mentally, physically occurred during that time? Um, I'd say, I want to say, I, I see, I can't even remember. I want to say I lost almost 30 pounds, I think. So I was like, when we ended, I was right around, from what I can remember, my pre-Oliver weight. So that was almost four years ago. Um so that was awesome. And I just felt so much more confident, so much more, I don't think that's even a word, more confident in myself. 
um, than I think I had during that whole time of having kids. Like I just felt good. Like I wanted to try on clothes. Um, I was okay with something being a little more snug fitting or whatever. Um, so confidence was huge. Um, the mental, like, I don't want to say my mental toughness, but my mentality, the way I like viewed, um, I don't know. Like, I feel like I was just in a better mindset. I definitely was like, okay, it's okay to put myself as a priority because if I don't, something bad's going to help happen and it isn't going to be good for my kids or my husband. Like, I don't want to have to feel so bad that I'm like yelling at them for no reason because it's something internal or, you know, whatever it is. And I don't think that's, I don't know if that's making sense, but. Um, Absolutely. I think you're, you made a choice at a, at a, at a time. And I think what happens a lot of times is people wait and wait and wait until they get to the point where there's a major health crisis or I'm screaming at my family or I am so depressed because I feel like such crap that I don't even want to go out and play with my kids, you know, and I think it's, it's crucial to sort of start picking up on those things early and addressing it kind of at the root. Cause number one, it's easier to address then rather than when you've let it go and go and go. And so you had the foresight to be able to know, like, if I keep going this way, this could be the end factor, you know? So tell us real quick about the, the dressing room story about that day. Um, Not like so, nothing fancy. It was no. awesome. Yeah, no, I, I don't even know exactly what I said, but I, from what I can remember, I remember I was going to Bismarck. Wesley had given me all I wanted over Christmas break was a day off to, with no kids to go to Bismarck by myself. And I think I needed new jeans because my jeans were getting too big. And my sister-in-laws, we are like New Year's revolution. We're going to go on a, uh, not a spending, not a spending spree, but a freeze, spree. a spending freeze. Yes. So I was like, okay, I got to get some stuff in now because it's <laughs> December 27th. Um, so I went in there and I think I had tried on some sweaters and some pants and just putting on them on. I remember like looking in the mirror and usually you'd be like, oh, but like, I don't like this or like, oh, why do I have that stomach or whatever? Like you find a flaw and you're like, Ugh. and I remember just putting on my jeans. I was like, I feel and look good. I love these. Like I didn't have any negative thought come across my mind in, in the mirror, which had been a long time, I think for me and probably most women or anybody in general that to have not have that or not say that. And I think that's really sad. I mean, that we kind of have, the world has put that expectation on us, but it was an amazing freedom feeling to not say anything bad. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Because again, I don't, I don't think people realize how often, you know, we wake up and we're immediately thinking about, oh, I feel like I'm crap, I'm fat, whatever. And then we go to bed feeling the same way. And it's just this constant uh, mental chatter. And then when you're able to go somewhere and we all know dressing room lighting sucks. <laughs> It shows all the stuff, you know, you're in this vulnerable spot and a size eight over here might fit in this brand, but then over here, it feels like you're a stuffed sausage, you know? So it's just oh. a very stressful situation to be able to go and have that sense of just like enjoyment and, and not have that negativity sort of filling your mind. And even if something does fit a little tight, okay, I'm going to go get, a, you know, that's huge. Yeah. That's a yeah. huge change. You should point out, guys, the reason she's having trouble forgetting or remembering some of the stuff is because it's been probably a year, I think, Kelsey. It's If not a year, it's been a close to a it's year since up. we did. Yeah, so, I think November we started. Yeah, so when, like, what, since that ended, what, um, what has been sort of this maintenance phase been like for you? Have you been able to maintain the weight loss and habits? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've really only fluctuated a pound or two since we've left, which I find really good considering how on and off I've kind of been this summer with just, I don't know, life. And I mean, which I feel like everybody can say, not that I'm saying that as an excuse, but what I like about your program is because you're allowing that, like you're taking into consideration that that's going to happen because it is like, we're not going to always have the perfect hour to work out every single day, blah, blah, blah. Like, I love that. It's just adaptable. It's truly a lifestyle, not like a six week program or whatever. Um, eating slow. Yeah. Um, eating slowly has been the biggest one. Like that one, I think was the biggest game changer for me. Cause not that I ate horrible to begin with I mean I obviously eat better now but eating slowly was the biggest one and I love water 
so that was not that big but adding just more of it was awesome I, I'd say those two are the biggest chain like game changers for me which are like the simplest things like it wasn't anything crazy it wasn't like cut out a meal and have a shake or whatever it, like it was so doable I love how you said that <laughs> And it starts to become automatic. It starts to just become one of those things that you do. And I'm going to do a video on this later, but that's also changing your behavioral genetics for your family. So when you start setting that example of mom eating dinner slower and making smarter food choices and being active and stuff, that's, that's showing your kids um, and everybody around you. So it's really changing your family's um, behavior DNA. Yeah. Because yeah. you've made and it's become automatic now. And it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. That takes time and repetition. Um, but you've been able to do it. And then when, and you'd mentioned that like my workouts haven't been that great lately, that happens, it goes up and down and that's just, that's just life. And somebody that tells you, you have to be, you know, maintaining this excellent, whatever for you can screw off because they obviously don't know how life works. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's why habits are so important. So Good. Well, what would you say to somebody, maybe there's somebody that is like been kind of on the fence, like I sort of want to reach out and find out more information. I know I need to do something. What would you say to those people? I'd say it's, I, I think of Nikki and what she says all the time with like nothing earned, nothing gained or nothing gained, nothing earned, whatever she says. And I think of that too. Um, I just think like, what, yeah. what's the worst that could happen? Like, with reaching out like that you say no which would you say no you know what I mean so I feel like there's no harm in just reaching out and if you're worried about like the financial burden or whatever like I feel like take a just think like is this going to benefit myself like can I be a better person or a better mom or a better wife or a better whatever better fill in the blank of what you are and like I need to put my put yourself first for a while. I don't know. This may sound really bad. I'm just horrible at talking. <laughs> but no, it's not at all because that's a lot of people's concerns. Like, what's it going to cost me? And it, this is selfish of me. And that that in itself is kind of a plague that women deal with. That like we're constantly putting ourselves last. And well, yeah. the kids need this. And, well, you know what? Who who runs the ship around here? And we can say it all day long. I know I need to take care of myself, but damn it, sometimes you just gotta, the buck stops here. I've got to do something in order to make that I am taken care of. So I'm able to take care of everybody else in my life. And um, this is not some kind of quick fix thing where it's like, oh my God, I failed, you know? And, and I tell everybody, just like I did with you, like you have to be honest with me and vulnerable because if something's sucking and not working, tell me and guess what we fix it we we, yeah. we change you know approaches because everybody's different so well nikki or nikki I'm, we're talking about nikki so much i'm calling her nikki <laughs> <laughs> with that though like how you said um the cost and like people worry about the cost and all that stuff like that was that was me that was me like we had a bad bull bull year and so it was like can can i do this and i mean i think wesley was like well is it are you like, do you think it's going to help you? And I was like, I think, I think so from what I've been reading and have talked to you about, I was like, I think this is what I need. And he's like, well then let's do it. You know, like he was so on board with me becoming happy. Not, not that I wasn't happy, but just more happy within, um, that it was like, it's okay. Like the one, this is something do it for yourself. His husband's in North Dakota. I don't know. There's like this she built cluster in North Dakota of ranch wives, and it's awesome. <laughs> and we've got Mark Rao, we've got Wesley, of these like awesome husbands that that just get it, you know, and that's that's super important. So well, Kelsey, I appreciate you taking time to chat with me, especially after all with all the kiddos and everything that you do. Yeah, well, it was fun. I hope this was helpful for somebody. I'm not like super eloquent with my words because I talk to toddlers all day but I am very passionate about this and about your program like I just I've tried some of the other ones and this one has been by far the the most eye-opening and rewarding and like doable one like it is ah you're great (laughs) it was good 
I, I, again, I really appreciate you um, sharing that with us. And guess what? About 99% of people who uh, do videos with themselves feel the same way. And you were wonderful. <laughs> you were wonderful. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Guys, like sometimes I'll edit things out because I, I'll cuss or because I'm just that kind of woman anymore that just sometimes <laughs> I just don't care anymore. It's like, whatever. So, all right. Well, I appreciate you. You get some rest tonight. Thanks for um, taking time to talk with me. I will. Thank you. We got family pictures tomorrow. So let's pray those kids sleep good. Yeah. Go knock them out with something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. See ya. Bye-bye.